Yeah. A nice soft pillow. Buddy, I was just riding by. I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Hey, you remember that time we was down in Tucson? You took that job busting Bronx, huh? What do you want, Ward? I told you I was just riding by and I... <laughs> okay, so I was not exactly just riding by. As a matter of fact, I come to ask a favor of you. You want to borrow some more money, Ward? You know me pretty well, don't you, old buddy? Yeah, Ward, I know you pretty well. Well, I need a hundred bucks here. I plan to do some fixing up around that old stump ranch of mine. That's the same excuse you gave me last month to borrow fifty dollars. <laughs> I've got to learn to keep my story straight, don't I? Say hello to Nora for me. Yeah. Oh, he, I, I really do need that money, old buddy. give you a chance to earn it. Earn? How? Break that bronc. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, if that's it. That's it. Okay. Hold it, Dave. Mr. Whitcomb's gonna ride this one. Okay, Heath. Dave for to do bronc busting. What's Whitcomb doing out there? Oh, Nick, honey, not now. Who's this? It isn't serious, is it? We don't know yet. Mother, this is Ward's wife, Nora. And this is my brother, Nick. How do you do? I'm so sorry. How did this happen? Well, it was my idea. 
Well, where is he? Here comes the doctor now. Doctor, this is Mrs. Whitcomb. How do you do, Mrs. Whitcomb? Oh, it's going to be all right, isn't he, doctor? Well, it's a little too early to tell. Well, what is it? His legs. They're paralyzed. Now, it could be a temporary condition, a small spinal fracture impinging on a nerve. I'm afraid only time can tell us that. Well, there must be something you can do. Very little, for the moment. I've given him something to uh, reduce the pain and help him sleep. He mustn't be moved, not for the present, at least. Can I see him? Of course. I'll take you up to him. I'll drop by tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye now. Bye. Whitcomb ever been on a bronc before? Accidents happen. You're not answering the question. I don't know. You don't know. You put a man up on a bronc and you don't know. Get your spurs out of me. Heath. All right, I guess I came down a little too heavy. What are you going to do? I'll break that horse. Go ahead. Break your back. If you think it will help. Silas has some supper for you. I'm not hungry. Oh, Heath, it was an accident. Nick was right. I shouldn't have made him ride that horse. Why did you? All of a sudden, I got fed up with him coming around asking for money. I was going to make him earn it. Well, I guess I did, didn't I? How much money have you given him? Around 300. Why? Because he's an old friend. Is that the only reason? When he came to Stockton a couple of months ago, he picked up the old Palmer place. And he kept talking how he's going to fix it up and settle down. I know he didn't mean it, but... Look, when you've, when you've grown up with someone, when you've... Worked with him, ridden with him, hunted with him. You can't help but feel something. That you owe him something? Not that exactly, but that you've got to help him. You just don't know how it was with Ward. He, he never could make anything work. Did he really try? Oh, a couple of times, but he was always getting lost in some scheme for striking it rich. And he always talked about how we were going to live off the fat of the land when he made that big strike. But he never did. Suddenly, all of Ward's dreams came true. But not for him, for you. And now you feel guilty about it. That's the truth, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, I think Ward does. I think he wants you to feel that you owe him something. And now I do. Oh, I don't know. I just felt like laughing. I remember when we used to laugh about nothing. We used to laugh all the time. We still do. Alone. Oh, come on, honey. Cheer up. I'm going to be out of this bed and on my feet in no time at all. I'm sure you will. And then you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to buy you a new outfit from your head to your toe and go to San Francisco and have ourselves a real time. Now, how do you like that? I love it. Of course, I'm going to have to mix some business with pleasure. I know some men I just might be able to get interested in that logging deal of Montana Shad Martin was telling me about. You know, if I could bring some... Some investors to Shad, why? Well, he'd just have to cut me in on that timber deal. You know that, don't you? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I guess he would. And then we... We could buy us a spread just like this one. And 
hire somebody to run it for us. <laughs> now, would that be some to have a place just like this? Oh, I'm going to get myself in on that timber deal of Shad some way. I'm not going to miss this chance. I mean that, honey. Yes, Ward. the doctor driving away. What did he say? I can take Ward home tomorrow. Home? But don't you think he ought to stay here where he can get the attention he needs? Well, he can get all the attention he needs at home. And besides, we can't impose any longer. You're not imposing. All right. No, I just think he would feel better if he were at home. And I know I would. I'd just be back in my own place, in my own kitchen, and... Well, you know what a nester I am. Don't just don't worry about us. We'll be fine. All right. Uh, it's Wake. Would you like to see him? Morning, Nora. Good morning. Heath. Heath, uh, I'd like to have a word with you tonight. Tell Ward I'll be up in a minute. Boy, the sky's falling down. We got about a week's work to do today. West boundary fence needs mending. Got to get a crew of men to work on that road into Long Meadows. And we got about four or five Bronx to bust, and old McCall says if we don't get those cows out to pasture, pre I oh, now, boy, you haven't heard a word I said. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I was just... Oh, look, Heath. Take my word for it. Whitcomb's gonna be all right. Now, I know a lot of men that were in worse condition than he is. And today, they're just as good as ever. I know some men who aren't. And our good fire do wonders for this place. Easy now. Nice and gentle. You know, I've been meaning to do some fixing up around here, but well, you know me, Heath. Never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. Well, what's this? Well, I brought it out here this morning for you. Oh, let's put you down here. Thanks a lot, old buddy. All right. Hey, well, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> and this is all right, you know that? I've been wondering how I was going to get around. Well, uh, I uh, better get on back. Thanks, Nick. Uh, no, none of that. I'll see you at home, all right? Yeah. Thanks for everything, Nick. Uh, uh... Hey, Nora, why don't you get that bottle from the cover so Heath here and me can have a drink? Some other time, would Oh, come on now. Cheer up. You look like you just come back from burying me. Ward? Well, he does. And so do you. Oh, look, I know what you're thinking. Poor old Ward. Tied to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, and it's all my fault. Ward, please. Well, don't kid yourself, old buddy. In the first place, it wasn't your fault. Not all of it, anyway. And in the second place, I'm going to be out of this thing before you know about it. As a matter of fact, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Now, you say that wrong for me, you hear? I still want to earn that hundred bucks. Okay? Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. You do that. Oh, no, Heath. <laughs> it's the hundred dollars I promised Ward for riding that bronc. Not for riding it, for breaking it. That's what Ward told me. But how are you going to get by? Well, that's our problem. Ward's mine, not yours.
That goes for you too, old buddy. I might not have been able to ride that bronc of yours. But no little old wheelchair is gonna throw me and get away with it. your help after all, old buddy. You told me to fix that board, didn't you? Or somebody got hurt. I think I want to lie down. Put it in the ranch account. This isn't for the ranch. You know Mrs. Whitcomb, don't you? Sure. She comes in for anything you let her have it. I'll pick up the bill later. I, I heard what happened out at the ranch. It's too bad. I, uh... Yeah. some repairs around here. Thought I'd get started on them. Morning. Morning, Ward. But, Keith, you can't do that. You've got your own work at the ranch. Now, Nora, don't argue, yeah? Uh, but, Ward... Well, honey, you know he. Well, stubborn as a mule. Once he gets his mindset, well, there's, no, there's nothing I can do about it. Leastwise, not in my present condition. You want a cup of coffee before you get to work? No, thanks. Keep that in from sliding over, will you? Okay. Watch your finger now. Oh, well, I guess I better go around the back way. Now, here. Let me have that. Step up here. Nice sunny humor this morning. He's gone? Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask where, now do I? I suspect not. Mm -hmm. How long is this going to be going on? He's been at the Whitcombs every day this week. Oh, Nick, be a little patient. Patient? How patient can I get? A lot of work to be done around here. Now, take it easy, Nick. Look who's talking. Why, well, I think Nick's right. And since you're so relaxed about it, why don't you stay here and help out instead of going to San Francisco? Quiet, child. Silas! What is it you want? More ham. More ham? Well, I have to do the work for two men, so I figure I better eat the food for two men, don't you? Absolutely. Thank you. 
Nora. Hello, Ben. You look prettier every time I see you. Where's Ward? He's still sleeping. Rode into town just last night. Heard what happened. It's too bad. You don't have a cup of that good coffee, do you? You know, the thing I remember most when I stayed with you and Ward in Hangtown that time was your coffee. talk to you. Look, the reason I came to Stockton was to see if Ward could pay me back the money he owed me. What money? <laughs> I guess he never told you about it. But he borrowed 50 bucks from me when you and him left Hangtown. Yeah, of course, I... I didn't know about him getting hurt, so I guess I'll just have to forget about it. No, you don't have to forget about it. You've got the money to pay you. It must be hard for you not to have a man around. I mean, uh, a man to do things for you. Well, I was thinking maybe I'd hang around and give you a hand. If you've got a spare room, well, I'll move right in. and We ought to be able to work out something about paying that money back. Some other way. Let me go. Let me go! Ah! No! Nora? Friend, I didn't know there was somebody here ahead of me. He's... It's a whiskey jack. A what? A whiskey jack. They're real pesky critters. Kind of a jay. You know they'll steal side pork right out of a hot frying pan? Listen. Uh, uh, how'd you learn to talk to him? Well, I'll have you know I was champion bird caller of Calaveras County before I was 10 years old. 
Oh, really? Could imitate 20 different kinds of birds. Modoc Indian taught me. <laughs> that was a nice sound, too. It's good to laugh again. Thank you for taking me to church, Heath. Welcome. You know, you've been tied down pretty close these last couple of weeks. Being tied down is one thing I never had enough of. I told you I'm a nester. Most women are. Heath. Heath, I... I don't want you to come around anymore. Ward is using you. It's only been a couple of weeks, Nora. But when does it stop? A couple months? Or a couple years? Uh-uh. Not if Ward doesn't want it to. You know him. You know he has a way of trapping people. Did he trap you? Yeah, I, I suppose so. But for nearly five years, you've stayed with him. Well, you know where he found me. Not yet 17 and already working in a saloon. Whatever he's given me is better than that. And he loves me, Heath. He's given me that. Please stay away. Not while he's still in that wheelchair. Please, Heath, do as I ask you. Nora, I don't know where it all ends. But it's not here. Not now. Just because Whitman can't walk, don't mean he can't see. What's going on with Barkley at that ranch every day? Why don't he do something about it? What can he do? I know what I'd do if some guy was fooling around with my woman. He'd be strung up before you knew what happened. I understand he don't kill a Barkley around here and get away with it. Not even half a Barkley. Even if he steals your wife. <laughs> I, uh, I guess you boys are talking for my benefit, so uh, I won't bother asking you to take it back. Get up. You. Who, me? Yeah, you. Up. Sure. We're all thinking the same thing, Barkley. Well, I was wondering what made this thing so bad. <laughs> Finish this outside, I gladly accommodate you. That goes for you too, boy. Well, I don't think they like the odds. Okay, get out. Hey, uh, Milt. Uh, let's make it whiskey this time, huh? Morning, Mr. Percy. How nice of you to drop by. Please sit down. May I get you something? Tea? Coffee? No, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll come right to the point of my visit. Please do. 
Mrs. Barclay, last evening at a meeting of the Board of Deacons of the Church, the subject of Heath was brought up. The subject of Heath. Now, what on earth is the subject of Heath? The Board has voiced its disapproval of Heath escorting Mrs. Whitcomb to services last Sunday. Go on. The deacons feel that, under the circumstances... What circumstances? Well, surely you've heard the talk. No, Mr. Percy. For the purpose of this conversation, I have not heard the talk. Suppose you tell me about it. Mrs. Barclay, you're making this very difficult. That's my intention. For I will not get down and wallow in the mud with any self-anointed, self-righteous bigots. Mrs. Barclay. Does Reverend Stacy know about this visit? Well, no. And since he is only a servant of the congregation... Is that what he is? Well, now, that surprises me, as I'm sure it will Reverend Stacy when I tell him about it. Because I'm sure he's under the impression that he's the servant of much worthier, much higher power. Good day, Mr. Percy. Mrs. Barclay, if I have offended you... You have indeed. And may I suggest that you quit while you're ahead. Good day. Can I help you? I might find something for you to do. Okay. Hold the end of this board for me. Calling in today? Yeah. Why don't you join me in a drink? Well, come on. It's just the last couple of days. I don't want Nora to know. Not yet, anyway. No what? I've stopped kidding myself. I'm never going to get out of this wheelchair. Oh, Ward, don't talk like that. Oh, I know. I know I shouldn't feel that way, but... Well, I've been thinking. Now, Nora and I can't go on living like this, Heath. Not depending on you for everything. Don't worry about it. Oh, you, you've been great. Just, just great. But, uh... I want to show you something. Here. Take a look at this. Well, come on, here. I want you to read it. Shad Martin and I were talking about it just before the accident. 
timber? Ten million board feet of it. Just waiting to be cut and sold to the mines in Butte. Well, he already has an option on the timber. Now all he needs is a little capital to buy equipment, hire crews to start cutting. Well, it's all there. Well, take it, read it. It's solid, Heath. It's a chance of a lifetime. How much capital? Oh, I can get 50% of the operation dirt cheap. And you know how much the Montana mines are paying for timber? Well, it's all in there. Shad has all the facts. How much, Ward? $5,000. I don't want to go living on charity for the rest of my life, Heath. Ward, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, but your family does. Well, yes, but you I know, can't... I'm not blaming you for what happened. At least why is no more than you're blaming yourself. I mean, I didn't have to ride that horse. But you knew that I wasn't a bronc rider and that something could have happened. Oh, not this bad, no, but... Uh, $5,000 is a lot of money, I guess. Maybe it's too much. Maybe it isn't enough. I don't know what the price of a pair of legs is. Do you? Five thousand dollars! I know how much I'm asking, and I know I don't have any rights. All right, all right. Now, you just put a cork in that kind of talk, huh? Nick's right. This isn't only your problem, Heath. It's the whole family. And I'd like to put a name on that little problem. It's called blackmail. You don't think we owe him anything? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. But I am saying he's using Heath. Heath, after all, didn't put a gun to his head to make him ride that bronc. And besides, who says that Whitcomb will ever walk again? Not Doc Morar. On the other hand, he didn't say he would, either. Heath, as far as I'm concerned, you can have the money. Thanks, Jerry. Audra? Well, I think Nick's right. That is blackmail. But if Heath wants the money... Mother, what do you say? Does Nora know about this? I don't know. I doubt it. But she'll go along. She has to. It's either that or go back to some saloon. No. Jared, would you go to the bank with Heath in the morning and get the money? Thank you. Somewhere? Uh, for a walk. You don't want to be here when Heath comes with the money. I'm ashamed, Ward. Ashamed of you for taking the money. And of myself for letting you. Oh, well, why didn't you try to stop me then? Could I stop you? Maybe. If you'd wanted to. But you don't want to. All right, I know what's been happening. I know you're falling in love with Heath. What are you talking about? Now, I don't blame you. In fact, I understand. No, I don't think so. Yes, I do. Well, you don't... You don't want to fall in love with Heath. But you are. And if you stay here, you will. You know, there's only one way to stop it. Get away. Never see Heath again. And that's why you want the money. Now go on for your walk. You knew what was happening and all you did was sit and watch? Do you think I enjoyed it? Yeah. I think you did. tell you after we got to Montana. I guess it doesn't matter. Of course, it would be better if Heath doesn't know about it. You can't 
to this ward. Oh, come on now, look, Nora. I closed my eyes to a lot of things. And I told myself that they didn't matter. But not this time. You can't do this to Heath, and if you don't tell him, I will. Now, Nora, we are this close. Just this close to having everything I always want for us. But I've already got everything I ever wanted right here. What, this place? Yes. That's what I came back to tell you. To beg you not to take the money from Heath. Ward, we could make something for ourselves here. We could... Oh, no. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life scratching in dirt for a living. Now, you don't want the money? Okay. Don't take it. But I'm going to. Please. Look, why don't you go back to that saloon where I found you? Maybe you'd like it better there. I'm going to Heath. And I'm going to tell him. No, 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 look. Hey, please, I'm sorry. I didn't... Let me go. I didn't mean to... Let me go. No, no, I'm not going to let you go. You're not going to tell Heath. You promised me that? Look. You're not going to Heath. You promised me that? Why, are you joking me? I can't... You can't breathe. You promised me you're not going to Heath? You're not going to tell Heath. Not now, not ever. You're... So, buddy, where's Nora? I think she uh, said she was going for a walk or something. Oh. Well, good luck in Montana. Thanks a lot. And you'll say goodbye to Nora for me? Yeah, sure. Heath. Take off your gun belt, no, buddy. Toss it down there on the floor. Do it, Heat. How long have you been walking? A few days now. Where did you say Nora was? She's on the sofa. She's dead, Heat. What? I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Of course, you won't believe that. And neither will anybody else. So I guess I'm going to have to kill you. I can't help it. I got to have a story that the sheriff will believe. I found you and Nora together, and I just lost my head like any husband might. I'm really sorry, Heath. Ward, she's alive. No. No, you're not going to make me fall for a trick like that. Well, go on, look for yourself. 
Well, go on, look. foul things up, don't I? Yeah. One way or another. I think after so many rooms and so many houses, one more wouldn't matter. You don't have to go. Well, there's nothing here for me. I tried hard to believe that there was. Almost had myself convinced of it. You know, Ward accused me of being in love with you. I tried to deny it, but I couldn't because I wasn't sure. But now I know that all I really wanted was for Ward to be the man that you are. The truth is, you've always loved him. I don't know. Even after what's happened, I don't know. But I do know this, that Ward didn't trap me. So I don't think that anyone can really trap another. I think you trap yourself, and you free yourself. And I am free now. Because I no longer have to live on the hope that Ward will ever change. And if he does? Well, he's not far. He's in Denver. And if he does, I mean, if he really does change, he'll find me. Shall we go? 